We are in the middle of primary election season. It is well underway across the United States, and soon the presidential primaries will be here in the greater West Bloomfield area and across the state of Michigan. In 2024, so many different ways that you can get out the vote in our community, whether you decide to go to the polls, vote early, or vote by absentee ballot. So many different methods, so much to learn, and so much to be aware of as we head into presidential primary season in our local community. Here to, here to clear up some of that information and give you some insight on how you can vote in West Bloomfield Township is their clerk, Debbie Binder, on today's edition of The Splash Live. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, Tyler. Yeah, glad to have you on, and, th and thank you for being with us, Debbie, because this is really important information as we head into the presidential primary season and soon into the presidential general election next fall. Uh, it it's an interesting time because there's not only uh, of course, encouragement to get out and have your voice heard at the polls and, and, and with your vote. But there's so many different ways to vote now in the state of Michigan. Recent laws, recent referendums have uh, made it a lot easier for people, a lot more convenient for people to, to get out and vote. What are some of the different ways in this election cycle that are available to people in our community to have their vote heard? So what we've seen now is that our, our residents in Michigan have three ways to cast their ballot now. And the additional one is the opportunity to vote early or early voting, as you mentioned. The other option is to cast a ballot, an absentee ballot. And the third is to vote in your precinct. Um, so now where you used to only have be able to vote by absentee ballot or in your precinct, now with early voting, you're able to come in. There's a nine day period prior to every election. Before, um, that will start. Actually, it's required in state and federal elections, but with the Oakland County will be providing it for every election. So Saturday, Sunday, the, the second Saturday before, through that week and the following Saturday and Sunday will be open for early voting, meaning Monday there is no early voting, but you can still get an absentee ballot before the you know the polls open on Tuesday. So this is a big a big change now. The difference between early voting and absentee voting is when you vote an absentee ballot and you turn it into us, that ballot is not tabulated until election day. If you vote early, or you, a process we call early voting, you actually feed that ballot through the tabulator yourself, which the nice part about that is if you make some kind of an error, like an example in the primary in August, if you crossed over parties and you would spoil the partisan section, if you vote by, via early voting and you feed that ballot through the tabulator, the ballot comes back out to you, tells you the mistake you made, and you have the opportunity to spoil that ballot and vote a new one. So that's a nice advantage to early voting. But it is also an advantage to have those three different ways to vote. Also, if you've requested an absentee ballot, you will be able to bring that ballot to either your early voting center or your precinct on election day and vote your ballot there, meaning you will get that same kind of feedback. Because again, the only difference between a precinct voter or voting and absentee voting is that the absentee ballot, if there's a, there isn't a voter there, there isn't an opportunity to cure a mistake if you made one. So there's three great ways now to vote and it should, you know, it's easier. and. I know because this first election is a presidential primary where people have to select a ballot and they're getting that ballot selection form, it is causing a little bit of confusion. So the best thing to do is reach out to your clerk's office or a clerk's office and get your information from a, a credible source. Yeah, and all that contact information in our local area can be found on our, our township and, and our city's websites, wbtownship.org for West Bloomfield, for Kegel Harbor, it's kegelharbor.org. Sylvan Lake is sylvanlake.org, and Orchard Lake Village is cityoforchardlakevillage.com. And you can always search those online to find links to their clerk's office and get in contact with them. We're joined by West Bloomfield Township Clerk Debbie Binder on today's edition of The Splash Live as we get ready for the presidential primary happening in late February. And uh, it's an interesting note that you brought up with absentee voting, that if you submit an absentee ballot and you realize you've made an error or and, and what will typically be a case for a lot of people during the presidential primary season is people are dropping out of the races or new people are joining in the races and they have a candidate they really like and they're no longer in the race. So they have a few candidates that they're okay with and someone they really like jumps in and they realize, oh shoot, I've already sent my ballot in and that's it, my vote's done. Now that's not the case because of the no reason absentee voting and other available options. So if people during this season where there's so much variation and change realize they've made a mistake or they want to change something, 
on their ballot before it's ultimately being counted on election day. What's that process like? Well, and that's an important, I'm glad you brought that up, Tyler, because that's one important change that I think people do need to be aware of. You have always been able to spoil the ballot you were issued as an absentee ballot and receive a new one. But with early voting and the early processing, that deadline has moved forward. So any ballot that is already turned into the clerk's office will not be able to be spoiled after the Friday, about 10 days before the election. So the, the, the second Friday before the election, Originally, it was Monday at 4, then it was Saturday morning, then it was the Friday before, but now it is an additional week ahead of time. So where we were always you know, pushing people to turn the ballot in early, or we're not now because we, you won't be able to spoil that ballot that last week once you've turned it in. If your ballot doesn't arrive or you haven't turned it in, you would be able to spoil it and get a new one. But if you if you already turned it in after the second Friday prior to the election, you will no longer be able to, to spoil that ballot and get a new one before the election. But yes, that is something that has been commonly you know done where as candidates drop out, especially in a presidential primary, or there's some kind of surprise and people do wish to change their vote. They had they had and they still have that opportunity to do that. But the important thing is that that deadline is now a week earlier. So whether you choose to, you know, you know that that one, or if you choose to early vote that nine days before, that once you cast that ballot, it's final. So if you have any thoughts that you might change your mind, you might want to hold on to that ballot a little mm -hmm. bit longer, knowing that if you rely on the post office, that may not be the best idea because we are seeing a, a, a pretty significant delay in mail. So I know it's kind of conflicting messages, but if you do have to rely on the mail, don't hold on to that ballot. Get it moving as quickly as possible. However, if you are concerned that you might change your mind or your candidate drops out or something changes, then know that once you vote early or once you turn in that absentee ballot, you will not have an opportunity to spoil it after that second Friday before the election. And, and lastly, Debbie, uh, you mentioned some of the issues with the, the speed of mail delivery, how that could impact getting our, our absentee ballots into our cl local clerk's offices in time for them to be counted uh, for this particular presidential primary. So if people are having those concerns, that they are getting closer to election day, what other options are available for them to drop off their ballots? We know in the past there's been drop-off locations at West Bloomfield Town Hall. Have those expanded in our community? Yeah, they have. And part of the also the legislation from Proposal 22-2 is a requirement of a certain number of drop boxes per 15,000 people. So we do have an increase in drop boxes. We have two drop boxes on each side of town hall. There's a new one on the police station side of town hall, which would also be the east side of town hall. But there are large white ballot drop boxes that are available up to 8 p.m. on Election Day and emptied by my office staff out, out until 8 p.m. Election Day and daily. We have two additional locations in the township. One is our, our community partner, our West Bloomfield School District, has allowed us to use the parking lot at ACS. So there is a drop box up at the West Bloomfield School District Administrative and Community Services Building, also known as ACS. And there is also a drop box in front of the West Bloomfield Parks Connect. So because of our community partners, we're able to have two convenient off-site locations that are checked daily and are checked exclusively by staff from the West Bloomfield Clerk's Office. So that's always good to know, too, that it is my staff that is checking th those drop boxes. There's so much to understand and, and the new ways that we're able to vote in 2024 as a result of, uh, as you mentioned, the Proposal 2 referendum passed by the voters back in 2022 and other changes over the years. All the more reason to get in contact with your local clerk's department for more information to answer any of your questions leading up to this presidential primary and, of course, beyond that toward the general presidential election in November. But presidential primary in the state of Michigan, Tuesday, February 27th. In the meantime, you can get more information from the West Bloomfield Township Clerk's Office on wbtownship.org and also from Facebook at West Bloomfield Clerk's Office. Debbie, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Tyler, for having, having me.